just wanted to say a big welcome to everyone today a lot of people are joining us right now my thing is going crazy admitting everyone in um so a huge thank you to everyone who has joined i um, really appreciate you guys giving up your afternoon i know it's always tricky in this time i think a lot of you are from melbourne new south wales act some are seeing tune in from New Zealand. Welcome to everyone, whether you are in lockdown or at school teaching face to face. Um, I will be taking you through Moat and how to use it in the classroom today. We also have Chris Betcher here from Google. Um, so, Chris, do you want to say hello to everyone? And um, sure, absolutely. Thanks, Eleni. Um, thanks everyone for joining today. Um, uh, I'm sure many of you know Eleni. She's very well known in these circles of educational technology and she does pretty amazing things with um, with all of this stuff with schools so thank you Eleni for running this today really appreciate it and um, yet another example of uh, our amazing Google Innovator community I think doing some really cool things so take it away Eleni perfect alrighty I'm gonna go get started straight away um, hopefully everyone can come in and everything goes well I, as I said, here is access to the slides today. They're pretty brief. I thought I would just go straight in and demo mode. So fingers crossed whenever you do something live, it's always risky, but I'm sure it will all work out fine. Um, the link is here. I'll also share it out with everyone if you do miss it um, at the end as well. If you do have questions, if you just want to hold them till the end, because I will probably answer them through this demo um, and hopefully I'll get to you might learn something new and a new way to use Moat in the classroom. Alrighty, I'm just going to admit some more people coming in, a lot more people coming in, which is great. Alrighty. Um, first of all, before we get started, I'd just like to do the acknowledgement of country. So in the spirit of reconciliation, Moat acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and extend the that respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. Um, so no matter where we are in Australia, we'd like to acknowledge that. Um, thanks, Chris already introduced me. I am Eleni Karitsis. I am a teacher from here in Melbourne. I am a Google certified innovator, trainer. I was, I don't like saying it, Australian Educator of the Year a number of years ago, founder of Teach Tech Play, which has hit pause. Do people keep asking me when is Teach Tech Play happening? Um, I have been on maternity leave last year, um, so that went on a bit of a pause. I am now also back at a school working part time as deputy head of junior school here in Melbourne, and I um, also work part time for Moat. So that's how I sort of started and got into this. Um, I wasn't using Moat last year. Obviously, I was on maternity leave, but it has really transformed and come a long way since last year. And I'll talk a bit about that now as well. So Moat is the whole company, our whole theory, our whole thing behind us is we want to create a world that types less and talks more. And I don't know about you guys, but typing, you could write the same email over and over again. And sometimes you just wish you could just talk to the person and tell them exactly what you feel or need to say, and you can do that with Moat. Um, so Moat is a Chrome extension, makes it easy for anyone to add voice notes and feedbacks to documents, assignments, emails, forms, and more. If you'd like to see Moat's privacy policy, you can see that on the website and reach out to the team if you have any questions. Uh, our mission is to make feedback faster, friendlier, and more effective. There are over a million users of Moat globally and I think we hit close to 2 million Moat per day currently globally. So a little bit about Moat for those of you, Moat was only founded and launched on the Chrome Web Store in March 2020. Perfect timing in the sense of a global pandemic it was five years in the making prior to that. It's a very small team. And um, currently, I think globally, including the education team where there are one full timer and three part timers, there's, I think, 12 people employed by Moat. So we are a very small company um, and we're all all around the world. I am sort of in charge of the education PD support for Australasia. So reach out to me if you have any questions, anything regarding pavement, 
payments, policies, etc. I can put you in touch with the team. So they really are there to support education. And I think it's really amazing the way they've employed educators and most of the team are currently in schools, which I think is really, really important to have that connection. So any suggestions, anything like that, let me know because the team, we do listen and we do act on what the users want. It has grown significantly in this past year, started off in just um, comments and now you can pretty much use it across most of Google and it's expanding dramatically. A lot of new updates coming out in the next few weeks, obviously with the Northern Hemisphere return to school um, or back to school as we're calling the little campaign. Um, so keep an eye out because lots of new updates coming, which is really, really exciting. Um, getting started, if you haven't, I think most people here today will have installed Moat. You can simply click on this and go and add it to the Chrome Web Store. Um, just make sure your Moat extension is up to date. You will see this image on a range of our social media. If you are sharing anything you're doing with Moat, please use a little hashtag. I'm trying to get going for Moat Down Under. Um, we are currently leading the charge here in Australia with the most moats being created at the moment. And I must say, it's my little celebration every time the team gets together because most of the rest of the world isn't there. So let's keep that up, Australia. Um, we're booming with the usage of moat at the moment, which is great. So we want that to continue. Um, I'm going to go through today how this looks, but I just wanted to let you know, moat works within Google Classroom, within Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Forms, also within Sheets, which a lot of people don't know about this one. So I'll definitely show you and share how this works. Um, within Gmail, um, we also have Sticky Moats, Moatpad, Moat Activity Dashboard, Moat Book, and you can do Transcription, Translation, and STEM Mode. So I'll go through all of these with you now. Um, and I'll come back to that one in a little bit. Alrighty, I am going to just stop sharing this and share my whole screen with you all um, because I'm going to jump into a demo account. So I think we've got everyone in here that is in here. Thank you to everyone who has just joined and I will continue sharing. Alrighty. Oh, someone else has just popped in. All right. Okay, so Chris, let me know if you can see my screen. I always want to make sure everyone can see. Yep, perfect. Perfect, easy, and I'm still getting more people jumping in. So I might have to just go a bit back and forth, but that's all good. Alrighty, so here we are in Google Classroom. This is just a demo account, so you'll be able to see. So no students' names or anything in this one. So I have got the Moat extension installed, and if I wanted to give my class an update, I can pretty much click on the announcement, and you'll see the Moat icon there. As soon as I click on Moat, Oh, I clicked it too much. All right, click on Moat. Please work now. You were working 10 minutes ago. Okay, welcome class. Welcome to day, however many of remote learning. I feel like we are constantly here. Check today's updates for our schedule and I look forward to seeing you all in our live meeting. So by creating short little messages like that, students can simply click on the Moat and then listen to your feedback. As soon as I post this, it appears in the stream as a nice card where students can simply click and play and listen to that feedback. Now, the great thing is if you're explaining assignments, it works exactly the same way. I'm gonna go in and mark an assignment. So this is a little project here for my students. I have got here, I can use Moat in the private comments um, that you will see it will appear once it loads. Gotta love internet, there we go. So I can click and record in private comments there. And what else I can do is I can simply comment just like I normally would within a Google Doc, click on there and then hold down the Moat button. Now I'm gonna show you how to save a Moat and this will then save it into my Moat book. So this works the same as the comments within Google Classroom where you can save them and reuse them. So if I wanna make a generic comment, Great work, I can see you've really understood now. Can you go back and check your definition of adjectives and verbs? So by doing that, I have added that voice note. I can then go and click the pencil to review my transcript here. So when I click here, I can listen to it and I can also save it. So if I wanna save it to my notebook, I'm gonna save it as Google Oz right now so I can refer to it. 
and hit save. Then once I exit, I can hit comment and that will post that right there. Now, that is a simple comment that I can do. I can also go up to my Moat extension and this is part of our unlimited features. You can click on settings and enable voice transcription and STEM mode. So I'm gonna to go to another student now. And for this student, they are, they're fluent in Chinese, so they speak Mandarin. So I want to provide the same feedback to this student, but translate that comment that I made. So by clicking on the comment, I can now hold down the moat icon and it will access my moat book. So here I can search and I can see the Google Oz. By selecting that, it will open it. Then if I click the pencil, it will open it again. And, it work. I can see you really understood. and then I can hit translate it and I can translate this into Mandarin. There are a range of languages there. And then I can simply hit save and exit and then comment. So what it will do is it will provide my moat recording there with the Chinese uh, or Mandarin translation underneath. So this is really good for students of EAL backgrounds that they can um, then read it in their first language and also hear the English recording. I've also had language teachers use it um, by going up and changing moat to record their voice in say French for instance and then what they've done is they've translated it back into English so students are getting immersed into the language that they're learning which has been really really helpful. So that is using Moat within Google Classroom and Google Docs. I'm now going to jump over to Google Slides because I think this is where most people really love Moat. Um, I know I absolutely love it um, in slides. It's where I use it the most because of the way it just embeds into slides. So this is really helpful. You can embed it onto class blogs, onto school websites. You can share things with parents and they don't need the Moat extension installed. So it just embeds it directly into your slides. So here is a welcome to the day with your daily um, update. You simply click on Moat at the top there. Um, and then you click to record. Welcome everyone to Tuesday. I hope you've had a great night. Um, check the whiteboard for today's daily update and I'll see you in our live meeting at nine o'clock. So by doing this, you can create your interactive classroom and invite students in and provide them with information that they need for the day. Um, I can play that, I can delete it, or I, and then I can insert it. I think someone else just jumped in, so I'm just gonna admit them in. Alrighty, so that will now insert that into my slides. Now it creates it as a symbol here. Now you can replace the image just like you can with other images. So you can search the web and replace that. But something I like to do is I move it to where I want and then I click on adjustments and I change it to transparent. So it actually hides it in my image. And then when I am in presentation mode, all the students see is the little play button so they can listen to it. You can also, um, like you can with most videos and recordings, you can set them to play automatically if you want as well, once you're in your formatting options here in Google Slides. Now, some ways that you can use it within slides in your classroom. These are some examples that I have used with my students. So this is a story that I love called Float, and this book has no words in it. So I provide my students with the images and then I have them write a collaborative piece together. Students then can go in and also record their voice. So this is great. We did this once we returned back to on-site learning and students recorded stories and recorded their voices. Then what I did was I created QR codes and I actually hung these up on the fence outside the school. Um, here in Melbourne, parents weren't allowed back on site. Um, so they had to wait outside. So for them still to be able to see students work and still to know what their child was doing. I feel parents have had such a big involvement with um, their child's learning the past 18 months that 
when we are back at school, some of them feel that disconnect, that they don't really know what's happening back at school. So this was a nice way for them still to see the learning taking place inside the school. And they really liked standing out there and just scanning the QR codes and listening to the stories that the students had created. So that's another nice, easy one. Another great way is exit tickets. So providing students with a simple slide, they can insert a photo of their work and then record themselves reflecting on the lesson of that day. I've just provided a few more examples here. This template you can also access on the Moat Learning Hub. We've got a whole lot of templates and resources, which I'll show you in a bit how to access them. Another simple one, two stars and a wish. Students can simply click the Moat button, record, and insert them on there. You can record multiple moats per slide as well, if you were wondering. Another great one is shape assessment. So I know teaching younger year levels can always be a challenge. Um, by the time you give them instructions, whether you are online or at school, by the time they get back to their desks or go to get started, many of them have forgotten what it is they need to do. So by simply setting up a Google slide with instructions on each slide, students can go back, whether you're at school, pop their headphones on, listen and complete the task. Whether they're at home, again, listen to it and complete the task. So here I've just provided some instructions on what they're going to do. And here they need to match the shapes to the picture. Here they need to then use the moat um, extension and record themselves telling you how many shapes and what this shape is. This is a great way to capture students in the junior year's um, knowledge of maths concepts. Sometimes with um, traditional maths tests, for many of them, they might struggle to read the questions or really to understand what it is that you're asking them. I know when talking to my prep and year one teachers, they always say to me, it's so hard to get around. You know, some of them need you sitting next to them while you complete assessment. So setting these up allows students to have that independence to go back and complete it. And then you as a teacher can reflect at a later time, which is a massive time saver in the classroom. So these are just a few more examples here. Here it is dragging the shape to match the, um, the words as well. Another great way is particularly now when you are at home and your students are learning from home, getting them to take a photo of the book they're reading and recording themselves um, reading that story passage to you. I even found when I was in the classroom teaching year six, this was something that I found really difficult to ensure I got around to every single child in the class each week just to hear them read and spend that time. Having them recorded as an independent or home learning task then allows me to reflect and listen to them and even give them some questions back through feedback that you can provide using Moat. Here is a collaboration um, little activity that you could do where you provide students with four boxes, you ask them and then they record their opinion back using those boxes. So these simple activities that you may do in the classroom using sticky notes, students can still do remotely and actually listen to their peers and really get different opinions. And I think that's a really the big thing, especially whether you're at school or at home or you've got a bit of both happening in your school at the moment. It doesn't matter where you are, Moat will enhance both your the way you teach, you get feedback and support your students, whether you are at home or in the classroom. Another example is a maths problem. So here again, providing those open-ended problems, those worded problems, getting students to talk and explain their answers back. And I think that's really important. And I think it's a step that sometimes when we are in this setting currently that we miss those conversations with our kids to really understand how they grasp that concept that we're trying to teach. So by getting them to record their voice and insert it onto the slides, you can hear and also provide that feedback directly back to them. Also a great way for when you have parent-teacher interviews to show parents their understanding. Another great one, this was created by John in the team here at Moat. He is based in the UK and this is a daily journal. You can actually access this on the Moat website through the Learning Hub and make a copy and use it tomorrow or today if you wanted to check in. I don't think anyone's still at school now, but you might want to set it. Um, so here they add the date, they share their moat and select an emoji, et cetera, for how they're feeling. Great way to check in and see how your students are going. Another way to use it is with book clubs. So having students take photos of their books 
um, add their voice recordings for different questions and for deeper understandings as they go through. These templates are also up on the Moat website, so feel free to go and use these. Another great way that I feel really helpful during this um, remote learning setting or even when you are in the classroom is a weekly update. So getting students to pick three highlights from the day or yourself picking three highlights to share with your class. So you can set up a collaborative Google slide deck. Each student has their own slide. You can add three highlights from your week because students love to know what we're up to during lockdown as well. Most of mine are about my daughter or my dog. That's pretty much my life at the moment, juggling them as well as working and moving house next week, which is very fun, let me say that, during the lockdown. Um, but also having students sharing a little bit about home and school things they've enjoyed and something they're looking forward to. They can simply click on the remote, um, record and record their voice and insert that into the slides. Great way to have other students then go and listen and hear from other classmates. So anything that keeps that connection, I think is really important, especially now, um, students really need that connection and they, they miss seeing their classmates. I'm gonna jump over now into Google Forms and share with you how it works here. So I've just set up a simple exit ticket here of two stars and a wish, and it works exactly the same like it does in slides, when you go to add another, where did that just go? Right to the top, awesome. When you go to add another one, you can simply click on the moat and record your question, and then students can play that. This is really, really handy for any students. They love hearing your voice, and when they respond, if I go to uh, preview this, they can hear, and when they've got the mode extension, they can actually respond with a mode themselves. And the great thing about this is what you can do then as a teacher is when you click on responses and click on sheets, what mode does is it puts them all directly into the sheet and you can simply click and listen to each of those. So this is really, really, Massive time saver. Um, obviously, you can collect students' names and everything as well. So you know exactly what student it is and you can access it and see it all within the same spreadsheet. So huge time saver. I feel this is one of our newer um, launches. It got launched probably, I think it was in May, um, and many teachers aren't utilising this. So if you are using Google Forms and want a bit of an exit ticket for your students at the end of the day as a wellbeing check-in, great way to hear them and see how they are going. Hey, Eleni, can I just clarify something? With the forms, yes. Yes. I just tried it myself, it looks like it puts the moat in the description field of the question. And so you can still have the actual question and then the voice underneath it, is that right? Correct, yes, nice. yes. So yeah, really amazing. And these are still new. So the thing with Moat is a lot of our, um, we've just launched an app over the weekend actually. Um, and with that, it's still new. So the thing at Moat is we put things out straight away. The team is all about putting it out and getting feedback. So some of the things that are coming as well are quite new. Um, I'll be able to share one with you um, in a little bit, which is quite exciting. Um, but with it, we want feedback. So please get in touch with the team. We want to know what's working, what's not working, what you want from Moat as well. Um, so yeah, test it out, try it. Any issues, please let us know. As I said, it is a small company, but we are growing rapidly fast and any way we can support teachers is what we're all about. Um, the final one, which I think is really, really cool. I don't really explore this too much, but I know secondary teachers absolutely love this. And the engineering team at Moat um, are really proud of this one. And that is STEM mode. So here I've got some equations. And if I wanted to record a comment, just make sure it is turned on when you go up to the Moat extension. Make sure you've got STEM mode. That is in the unlimited account. So if you are just using our free account, you won't have access to this. But um, send me an email and I can always help you get access or trial it. Um, you automatically get a free trial for your first 30 days when you do sign up to Moat. So many of you, if this is your first time using Moat, you will have access to this. But if it does disappear, it's because your free account has run out. Um, but by doing that, I can click on the comment and record a mess, oh, I hold down my button again. I don't want that one. 8x squared plus 7 equals 0. 
Now let's see, it loves my accent and when I'm tired, it always stuffs this up. So let's see how I go when it translates six, this time. Seven, All right, I don't know why it did stem because I said stem at the start. Now I wanted it to say takeaway and I want to show you this. You can actually go in and edit that directly. So, oops, oops, what did I click then? I don't even know what I did then. Oh, I deleted my whole thing. Sorry, guys. Let me just do that again. 8x squared plus 7 equals 0. Clicking too many buttons here. All right, so here it will come up with my translation. 8x squared plus 7 equals 0. My transcription. Let's go. You can do it, computer. Now it's not going to want to do it. Hold on one moment. There we go. So I can click on it and I can actually edit that. And when I've edited that and hit save, and exit and hit comment, what it now does is it actually provides that down the bottom as a maths equation. And I think that is really, really powerful. If you want to provide extension questions to students, you can simply record them and it leaves it really nicely for them to answer them there. So that is in the unlimited account. You have that option there. Another thing that we have is within Gmail, you can actually record a moat here as well. So moat will appear within your Gmail. And I find this really helpful, particularly when we are back at school and say on yard duty, there is an incident and I need to report back to the teacher. I don't have time going back in to teach to write out an email. I can simply create a recorded message and send that directly to the teacher. So that's a quick, easy way and a huge time saver. I know sometimes you write an email about a hundred times over as a teacher and then you think, oh, have I really got my message across? You know, it would have been so much easier to walk down the hall and just tell the teacher instead of writing this email. You can now do that with a simple voice note there as well. Now, this next feature is a, quite a new one and it's definitely one of my favorites. So here I'm just on the Melbourne Zoo website and I wanna send this to my class and provide a moat recording on any website. So once I'm in Chrome, I can simply click up here on my moat button and at the top here, I can record a moat directly. Hi guys, I would like you to explore this website, choose an animal and use this for your project. So by doing that, it creates a moat and here is this moat here. Then when I go to paste it into the website, it comes up and that moat um, recording, this is called sticky moats. This now appears on the website. So I can move this around. I can also play it. And as I play it, I can still scroll on my, I'm just gonna mute it while I talk over it. But students can then go and explore a website. So this is really, really handy that you can provide website links to students with your voice over the top with instructions. Now in doing that, if I wanted to send that directly to Google Classroom, I can click on my moat icon and click on my activity and engagement. Now by clicking on this, a lot of teachers don't know about this, but this is where you get to see who is seen, listen to your moats. And you can also share those sticky notes directly to Google Classroom. So that will appear in Google Classroom and when students click on it, it will open up just like it did here for them to go and explore and do their work. Um, I'm gonna go back a few, quite a few here to show you what Moat looks like um, for when students actually listen to it. I just gotta find one. On your My Activity, you've also got Motus and Unmotus, so you get to see who has listened and who hasn't listened, obviously, to your moats. You can also delete them or make them hidden if you don't want them to see them anymore. You can also see different students and um, all their moats there. So if you want to know how many moats you've given to a particular student, you can see them. And this is what I wanted to show you. So when you do a moat on students' work, in Google Classroom, they can actually, it tells you whether they've opened and viewed it, whether they've listened to it, and students can give you an emoji response so that they've understood 
There's also another one that says they don't understand and launched in the last 24 hours. There are a couple more emojis there. So keep an eye out. Um, that will be rolling out to your accounts in the next couple of days. So we have extended those um, emojis available there that students can respond directly within Google Classroom. Um, this is really great, especially when you've got parent-teacher interviews, you can actually see if students have listened to your feedback and acted upon that. So I'm going to come back to you all here and stop presenting for a second. That is most of everything I wanted to show you with what Moat has to offer and how you can use it in your classroom. I'm just going to go back to my original presentation and share that with you because there's a couple other little things I wanted to share with you all. Here we go. Okay, so we've just gone through all of these. Um, as I did say, there is a new iOS app that you can download from the App Store for you. This is great if you are on the go when you are back in the classroom, you can simply record a moat and then access it later in your activity. Sorry, talking so fast, I'm like losing um, my voice here. Um, I'm not going to play that video now. Let's go to the next. Now, for ideas and inspiration, um, I'll provide the link to the slide deck as well for you guys. There is a Moat blog. We do have regular Moat webinars and we are launching a back to school special for the Northern Hemisphere. So if any teachers would like to jump on and do some more PD, that is always available. Always reach out to me if you would like me to run a demo for your school. I can also do that as well. But the big one is the Moat Hub. This is a library of content <coughs> and resources for teachers. So as I said, the education team, we have been creating a range of templates and ideas for the classroom. So definitely check that out. A lot of them you can use directly in your classroom tomorrow. So go there for a bit of inspiration. And if your teachers need some ideas, I would definitely be sending them there. We also have Moat Minutes on YouTube. So for any of the ideas and the products that Moat offers um, on how to use it, check out Moat Minutes on YouTube. They're, they are all about a minute long and they go through each um, different feature and how to use it, um, which is great, especially if you forget one of them and go, oh, I remember something and you don't want to listen to the whole webinar I've done today, you can go back and check Moat Minutes on YouTube. If you are interested in becoming Moat Certified, definitely apply. Um, we also have our Moat Certified Ambassadors. That happens twice a year. That will be opening up shortly, so keep an eye out for that. It happens twice a year in January, at the beginning of the year and in the middle of the year is roughly where that when that happens. Um, become Moat Certified, you get access to a lot of the amazing communities and everything else. Um, we hit over a thousand Moat certified educators. So it's really easy to do. It's a simple Google form that you have to complete and you can become certified. I know another teacher reached out to me on Instagram and completed it within half an hour. So it doesn't take very long and it's nice to get recognition for using Moat. Um, all right, I'm going to pop back and if there are any questions, I'm also going to go back in case anyone wanted this slide deck for um, any resources? I think there were a couple of questions here. Yep, there were. Um, and, and by the way, Lenny, the uh, the video that's embedded in the slides needs to be shared. It's um, oh it's yeah, sorry, I'll do that as soon okay. as we're off this. But some of the questions you got, Kate asked, is there a maximum number of moats per slide that can be added? Kate, I do not know. I have uploaded per slide. I think I got up to about ten. Um, but no, I haven't heard of there being a limit. So I can always check and find out, but I don't think there is a limit. Obviously, it might get and slow down your slide the more you add to one slide. So I wouldn't probably overdo it by adding 30 or 40, obviously. Um, it might also become a bit overcrowded. But um, no, I've seen many things, especially language teachers globally using it, having multiple um moats on a slide and not being an issue so i don't know if there is a max i don't think there is um but yeah just be mindful you might want to spread them out a bit as well nice 
Um, Michelle asked, is there a video we can share with students to help them know ex how to easily add Moat to their extensions? Michelle, we are currently working on this at the moment. So we are hoping to launch this in the next couple of weeks. So um, there will be one of the um, Moat educators like me based in the US has been working on this, creating a whole student portal with videos for students on how to access that. So make sure you follow Moat on socials and then you will get access to this once it is available. It is coming, so not, not far off. Nice. Uh, Jessica wants to know, and I actually wondered the same thing, if you have your own audio, like if you're a music teacher or something, can you upload your own audio into Moat? Okay, Jessica, I have put this to the team. So I um, actually put this forward saying it would be awesome to be able to upload your own Moats. Now, if, for instance, you are interested in this, I'm just going to pop it over. And there is a website that you can access. I'm going to chuck it in the chat now. And what you can do here is um, any feedback, any apps, if you want to know what the developers are currently working on, you can go here and put your request. So at the moment, they are working on the pause button. Um, Moat for iPad just went out, so the mobile app is now complete. So that's there. Um, another feature was a drive for all your voice notes to go. That's also been created. And you can also request your own. So um, if you have any requests, if you want another language, um, pop that in there. We're always looking and you can vote for your favorite one. So what they do, we like competition at Moat. So if you want something, tell everyone at your school to vote for it and then the developers will get started on that. So pop that in there. I think I've actually already added it. Another thing I added was it would be awesome when it gives you the link to make it directly as a QR code as well. So that's one of my requests. So I put, every time I think of something, I just put it in there. So feel free to add to that, Jessica. There are two versions of the Moat extension under and over 18. Do both teachers and students need to? No. The reason for that is obviously um, teachers, you're over 18 and students are under 18. That's just a privacy thing, um, but it still works exactly the same. Um, so if you want to know more about that, just contact the team via our help desk and they can explain a little bit more about that. But it's just because of the users. Um, yeah. Do you uh, use Moat over? Oh. How do you use Moat over the web page again? All right, I will show you this again. I'll just stop sharing this and share my screen with you again. I feel like I'm getting good with this sharing. It's quite and just, while that's loading, Eleni, there's probably two questions here from Miss Pickett that you could probably answer. Um, do yeah. all students need to download Moat to view the messages and comments? They have to have the extension installed, I'm assuming. They don't. So mm. what it does is if students do have the mess uh, Moat installed, it will play directly wherever they're accessing it. Mm -hmm. If they don't have it installed, and I know this could be the this current situation if kids are remote or not, what it does is it just provides them a link and it takes them to a moat landing page where they just listen to it there. So that goes the same if you send a moat to a parent, for instance. I don't know why you'd send a moat. You might send a moat to a parent or if you send a moat to, say, your husband or a friend who doesn't have moat installed, it will provide them with a link and they just open it and it opens on its own web page so then they can listen to it. So it doesn't matter. That's something the team has been working on quite a lot right. to make sure that's seamless. So for Moat sticky notes, if I'm here, for instance, I can click on my Moat extension at the top up here in my browser, click up here where it says record a Moat voice note. Here I am recording my Moat, da 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 done. It then will provide you with the link which you can copy there or you can go to My Activity and Engagement and when you go here, you can then share it to Google Classroom directly um, there. And I think because you were sharing your window there, not your whole screen, we didn't actually see the pop-up. Oh, sorry. That's okay. That's, I'll uh, do it again if you want. We, we, we were imagining it. You're I, I love it when you do one bit and not the other bit. Anyway, it's all <laughs> right. You forget sometimes when you're doing it. All right, so I clicked up here. You can all see yourselves now, I think. That's so I it. I clicked up here and then I get that record a voice note up here. And that's where you can record it. Once I've recorded it, I can copy that link and share it with anyone. Or I can go to my activity and engagement and then share to Google Classroom. So how do you get it floating on the web page though? 
What was oh, that? So you? once it's there, I then can. I don't think I copied it then. Let me go back here. Note. Recent notes. Copy. That. In the link and then it opens it up and then my moat just appears and so then I can move it around and then I can hit play there mm -hmm. I don't think you're screen sharing but oh that's all right I think I think we got it <laughs> it's like I keep forgetting I stopped and then I started it <laughs> here we go so here I am I can click up here and then I can recent moats copy that link there and then when I open it, it was up here. And then I can simply move that around, hit play, and then it works. Okay. So, yeah, once you're in there, you hit the record button, recording, and then you just copy it, which is there, and then just paste it into a new tab and it will work. Right. Um, Ms. Pickett also asked, what's the free, is the free version enough for students? And maybe you could tell us what the difference is between the free version and the non-free version. So the free version gives students or teachers 30 second um, voice mode. So you only get that 30 second voice recording. Um, you don't get the translation, transcription or STEM mode, right. um, which I feel is really, really key in everything that we do and everything that Moat has to offer. Um, and once you have the unlimited version, you get access to all of that and 90 seconds voice recording. They're just changing the price structure at the moment. So it's going to go per user and it will go down to, I think it is roughly a dollar thirty per user. So um, quite affordable. So if you are interested in going to that unlimited, please reach out to me. I can put you in contact with the team. Um, that pricing has either just come into effect, you can contact on our website and request a quote and they can set up and um, do that for you. So uh, reach that, out to the team. Is that price per month, per year? Per, per year. Per, per year. year. That's great. That's awesome. So really, really affordable. Um, yeah. we've, they've done a lot of work in relation to how much moat costs and um, making it affordable for schools. Obviously, the more accounts you purchase, the cheaper it is. So if you are in a diocese or... Um, within a big group of schools, the more licenses you purchase, the cheaper the cost is right. as well. So, yeah. Right. And and I think I can answer my own question here, but like given that it's a Chrome extension, if you're running in a school with Workspace and Chromebooks, you can just push that straight out to all the Chromebooks so that it just appears on all the student devices. They don't have to do anything, right? Correct, correct, which makes yeah. it really, really handy. Um, so, yeah. And even, and now even, I know some schools had, um, I know we don't like talking about, especially that we're Google, but a lot of schools we had found had iPads and then they've got Chromebooks for the upper years. Now um, with the iOS app, um, that's another work in progress. So we were filling that gap there as well. So definitely once you start pushing things out, it makes it a lot easier. So yeah, definitely you can purchase it for teachers, students, everyone within your school, um, no. very affordable. Uh, Lisa, the price, if I recall correctly, was $1.30 per user, but Eleni said that you'll get volume discounts on that if, it, if you have more users. Did I get that right? Correct. Right. I haven't seen the official. That's what I I saw somewhere there in one of our chats. That was what it was. I'm not in um I'm not in billing, so I'm in education. Yeah. But yes, that, I can put you in contact with the team. I um I my job at Moat is to show everyone its potential, how to use it in the classroom. I'm very happy I'm not in yeah. sales. It's not my. I get, I get that question all the time about Google stuff. People go, "How much is such as that?" I don't know. I don't sell stuff. It's, yeah, I'm like, I it's think it. it's around this much, and you know, because it's global, there's prices everywhere. <laughs> We're based everywhere, but I can put you in contact with the team. Reach out via the website, and they can set up. You can just contact on the page for school and um, they'll set up a quote for you guys. So nice and easy. Nice. That's fantastic. Um, any any other, that? No problem. Were there any other questions? Karen, you've got your hand up or did you want to ask a question? All good? I think we're all good. If anyone does have any questions, I'll hang around for a few more minutes um, and answer those. I'm weary of your time. 
I know that for many of you, you have been online for most of today. So go enjoy. I don't know what the weather is. Oh, it's starting to get cloudy here in Melbourne, but it was nice and sunny. So go enjoy a bit of the sunshine. Not sure, Sydney, what your weather's looking like, but enjoy that. And please reach out. You can get in contact with me on any socials. Um, follow Moat. Um, use the hashtag Moat Down Under. We want to build a bit of a moat inspiration for Australian educators during this time. And you can always email me, Eleni at just, at Lenny at moat .com. My email's just changed. It was just moat. Now it's just, just moat. I'll put that in the chat. I, I actually have one quick question, and that is um, for schools that need to look at uh, like privacy impact assessments and privacy policies and stuff, is there somewhere they can find all that information? Yeah, that's all on the website and um, you can access it all there. So if you are interested in any of the privacy and everything, I know that we are compliant. I had to, when I started working for Moat, do all of this compliance training, um, mm. global compliance training. I must say it was very interesting being a classroom mm. teacher doing that. Um, so, yes, it is obviously used globally. So it's GDPR compliant, everything else. So reach out to the team. They can get into the nitty gritties of any policy things. Um, obviously, as I said earlier, I am in the education for that part, but we do have a team that can talk to you more about the privacy stuff if you have more questions regarding that. Um, Reach out, follow us online, and enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Thanks, Eleni, and thanks everyone for coming. Um, this is all, this is part of a an ongoing thing that I'm trying to do here at Google with uh, with some of our sort of really valued sort of. Not, we don't even have a formal partnership arrangement. We just know that we there's tools actually, out there. Actually, well, Chris, I don't, know, I don't know about any yet, but we have Google there's so many great tools out there that work brilliantly with Workspace that. Yeah. You know, I, I know, you know, my mandate is to talk to people about the stuff that Google does, but there's all this other great stuff that other companies do that work great with us. So I'm trying to put together a series of webinars over the next, you know, however many months coming where we, we invite companies like Moat and, and other companies that work well with our stuff to come and tell you about what they do. So keep your eye out for that. I think we've got one coming up with Cami in a couple of weeks' time. Um, I, it was probably in the email that went out, but watch the watch the Twitter if you don't hear from it. And um We'll let you know.